Canva has announced a slew of AI upgrades that are highly functional and will actually give you design superpowers. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. There are a ton of AI announcements right now happening, an incredible number of products coming to market, and broadly speaking, I think that they fit into two categories. The first are really exciting foundation model updates. One of the things, for example, that people have gotten really excited about recently is Mistral 7B and what it adds to the open source environment, how it changes the way that LLMs might be able to be run on phones. And of course, probably the most anticipated product of this fall is Google's Gemini. But then on the other end of the spectrum, we're seeing a ton of announcements right now of what you might call practical AI or applied AI. This is the integration of artificial intelligence into tools that perhaps we already use, or even if we don't already use them currently, the purpose of the tools is to help make the workflows that we already have work better rather than totally reimagine what we do in the first place. On that front, Canva's Magic Studio is, I think, a big upgrade. A couple months ago, I did a show about the AI tools that I actually use on a daily basis. And part of my motivation for that was to get people out of the mindset that they have to try every new tool that comes down the pipeline. In that, I featured Canva because it is one of the tools that I use absolutely every single day. So what we're going to do is look at some of the tools that were announced. We'll give them a try. And I think at this point, I should say that while I will try to make this work for podcast format, I also highly suggest that if you're not watching this on YouTube, that might be a better format for this one, as inherently there's a little bit of experimentation here that is not just audio, but visual. So first, let's cover the news side of this. The way that The Verge writes it up is Canva's new AI tools automate boring, labor-intensive design tasks. They frame it as a way to save time editing documents. And given how much Canva is used for photo editing, I thought we'd start there. One of the tools that was actually released some time ago, but which I use every day, is Background Remover. If you've ever seen my thumbnails on YouTube, you'll know that I often have myself in them, or I have individuals that are featured in the videos, and of course, they don't have backgrounds. That used to be a labor-intensive manual process. Now all you have to do is click on the button Edit Photo and go to BG Remover, and within a matter of seconds, usually two or three, boom, you have the background gone. You can also get more granularity if, for example, there are parts of the image that were erased that you didn't want to, you can restore them, or if there are parts that you actually don't want, you can remove them. So for example, in the photo of Sam Altman that I'm editing now, maybe I want to take out the Bloomberg reporter's arm, I'll simply increase my brush size, and boom, Next up, let's try the Magic Eraser. This is a way to remove elements from a photo that you might not want. In our case, while Sam Altman being interviewed is the focus, there's an awkward Bloomberg microphone on the left. Let's see if the Magic Eraser can take it out. So we click on Magic Eraser. Once again, I'm going to increase slightly the brush size, and then we're going to follow all the way along and see if it can remove this. Now, it's not perfect. This is a big artifact, and you can see some lingering elements. So let's try on the other side, removing the reporter's hair. It did a little bit better with that. Next up, let's try one of the new features, which is called Magic Expand. This time I've chosen an image of Elon Musk with Grimes. We go to Edit Photo and Magic Expand, and we're going to say Whole Page, click Magic Expand, and now we have a filled out background of this image, which I think might have been from the Met Gala. Like with other AI image generation services, there are a variety of options to choose from, and you can also generate new results if you are not happy with what you got. Now, the quality here seems definitely lower than with things like Adobe's Generative Fill or Midjourney's Expand features, but the fact that it exists in Suite makes a big difference for someone who's living inside the Canva toolset. Magic Edit is a feature where you can replace one object with another. Let's try to turn this CNBC reporter's microphone into a bouquet of flowers. So we've selected the area that we want to transform. We describe the edit, a bouquet of flowers, and then we click Generate. We then have a set of options to choose from, and boom, now CNBC is offering Sam Altman some flowers instead of a microphone. Magic Grab is a really cool feature that allows you to move things around within an image. So for example, in the Sam Altman photo, instead of taking him out of the background, we could simply move him around in the photo. And then maybe the way that we get rid of that microphone is just by changing the aspect ratio, so we don't need it there. The last of these image editing tools that I wanna try is Grab Text. Like Magic Grab, it allows you to take text on the image, move it around, or even change the actual text itself. You can see just from the photo editing suite, this increases the flexibility of this tool in a massive, massive way. Another category of the tool set is called Magic Media. Now, this one is one that has people really excited because it's integrated with Runway and is a text-to-video generator. Magic Media says, describe a scene to generate a few seconds of video. Let's try something of the season. Pumpkin, patch, in October. 
at twilight generate video and then sure enough there is our video of a pumpkin patch at twilight which we can then drag over and size for a horizontal video and build into something that we might put on either instagram or tiktok or youtube shorts magic media also has a text to image generator although you probably have seen a lot more of those so we'll skip a demo of that for the purpose of this video now it appears from my account at least that i have 50 credits for videos per month and 500 image credits per month although I don't know if that's free or based on the plan that I pay for. Another very cool video editing tool that I wanted to show is their Magic Design, which is the text to design creation part of the suite, but for video. So let's take a set of images from my wife's recent photo shoot for her true crime podcast. And we will say promo excited promo video for a true crime podcast and see what it comes up with. Let's give it a play. So the video I came back with had a upbeat soundtrack based on probably the word excited, and then effectively a slideshow of the photos that becomes a video, but it also layered on this text. Are you ready for a new true crime podcast? Join us as we investigate the most shocking cases. You won't be able to stop listening. Available now on all major platforms. Don't miss out on the drama. You'll be on the edge of your seat. This is one you won't want to miss. Subscribe now and get caught up on all the action. You won't be disappointed. Now, of course, is this the exact language that I would choose if I was creating this video? Not necessarily, but have I ever been able to create a video like this in approximately 10 seconds of waiting and five words of description? Also, no. I think a lot of the power of these types of tools is to one, be able to experiment way more rapidly than you would otherwise, and two, get to some basis that you can use much more quickly. For example, I'm on the last slide where it says you won't be disappointed, well, I can decide that that's not exactly the message that I want, so I'll click on Magic Right, and we'll say, for kicks, sprinkle fairy dust. Rest assured, dear one, for enchantment awaits you. Sure, let's go with that. Now, the last thing I want to show off is something called Magic Switch. This is a tool that allows for automated resizing and translation. So let's, for example, take a YouTube thumbnail that I created for a show some number of months ago. We'll click on Magic Switch, and we'll resize it at 1280 by 1280, so we'll turn it into a square copy and resize, open it up. And really what we've got here is just an expansion of what existed, which isn't perfect, but which does allow me to quickly tweak, move things around, resize them. Again, it hasn't replaced me, but it certainly made things much more efficient. Now let's try translate. Let's give it an easy one and try to translate it into Arabic. Now the problem of course is not speaking Arabic, at least not speaking Arabic well. I don't know how well the translation did. But especially as a compliment to all of the auto-dubbing features that are coming out on things like YouTube, this is a really powerful update. So let's bring it back and try to just wrap this up. What's powerful, I think, about things like Magic Studio is not just the tools on their own, although individually you can see how valuable they each might be. What's more important is the way that they come together to create a fundamentally different experience that has the potential to radically increase productivity in terms of how fast we get things done. As someone who has to create an enormous amount of content on any given day, not just the podcast you're hearing and the video that you're seeing, but all of the assets that go along with them, thumbnails, descriptions, cover images, social promotional images, having all of these tools in one spot is incredibly valuable. Now on that front, it also is on trend with something that we're seeing in terms of how companies are trying to win the AI wars, and that is taking advantage of existing distribution channels in order to extend moats that already exist. Canva has something like 150 million people who use the service. I was using it, for example, long before they had any AI features. By integrating these types of tools, they're throwing elbows to try to block out startups that might design an AI-first design studio experience from the ground up because Canva already has such a lead in terms of who's using it. That doesn't mean there isn't room for partnerships and integrations. 
We saw in the video generation that Canva is powered by Runway, because at this point, that's not something that they can easily replicate. The last trend, which is the one I mentioned at the beginning, is just this broader idea of the functionality, the practicality of AI coming to the fore in this fall season. We're seeing these tools move from cool and fun to tinker with to things that are actually impacting our jobs, our workflows, and how we get things done that we already wanted to get done. Now, for those of you who are interested in specifically these Canva tools, this will not be the only AI editing and design product that you're going to get in the next couple of weeks. Adobe has started teasing something that they call Project Stardust, which they describe as an object-aware editing engine that does a lot of these same things and potentially even more than the Canvas photo editing tools. It's supposed to be released next week, so we will keep an eye out for that. For now, I appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. Until next time, peace.